Good morning once again to all our viewers. Our next session will be hosted by Fine Fragrances Private Limited. The world is constantly changing around us and so are human requirements. Over four decades, Fine Fragrances Private Limited has closely witnessed how global and regional consumer choices impact ingredient sales in the fragrance and flavor industry in India. Today, the topic for the presentation is Conscious Consumers, Drivers for Future Ingredient Choices in the FNF Industry. Joining us today from the Fine Fragrances team via a pre-recorded call are Ms. Kajal Shah, Ms. Kea Shah, and Mr. Neeraj Shah. Rahul requests you to please start the video from Fine Fragrances. Good morning and wish you all a very auspicious Goodie Parva. I am Kajal Shah, Director of Fine Fragrances Private Limited. Welcome to our presentation. Fine Fragrances is a leading aroma ingredients distribution company with four decades of committed service and timely deliveries. Our Pan India customer base covers 500 small, medium and large businesses that operate in various industries like Agarbatti, FMCG goods, fine perfumes, attars, cosmetics, and now newer sectors like wellness spas and aromatherapy. Our ready stocks comprise of over 150 top quality specialty aroma ingredients produced by International Flavors and Fragrances Inc. using the best industry practices. They include the most popular as well as upcoming aroma choices of the global FNF industry and at the same time also cater to Indian regional and local preferences. We also stock high quality terpene based ingredients from Simrise and several other commodity ingredients from reputed manufacturers. In house, we manufacture a range of cost effective reconstitutes and perfumery bases. Our subsidiary Fine Aromatic and Herbal Extracts makes 100% natural absolutes and resonoids from local and imported gums. We pride ourselves for adding value to our customers' products, whether it is achieving cost savings through use of high impact molecules or guidance with regulatory compliance or keeping abreast with global trends. We do our best to share right knowledge to support our customers' goals. Our motto is channelize ideas, not just raw materials. The world around us is constantly changing and each generation has its own set of challenges and needs which decide the choices they make. So our topic today is conscious consumers, drivers for ingredient choices in the FNF industry. Before I hand over to Kea and Neeraj to start the presentation. I would like to express special thanks to Matthew Williams, Amit Ghosh, Michelle Chavon from IFF for their support. I'm also grateful to the Fafai Committee for organizing this event and to our customers and the audience for attending this session live or viewing it later. Wish you all an exciting and successful Fafai Virtual Bazaar 2022. Hello everyone, good morning. Welcome to our Fafai session. I am Kia Shah, New Product Development and Regulatory Manager at Fine Fragrances. Our today's topic, as mentioned by Director Mrs. Kajal Shah, is Conscious Consumers, Drivers of Future Ingredient Choices in the FNF Industry. I will take you through how and why they are the drivers some key relevant trends, and the new buzzwords in the FNF industry. Then Neeraj Shah, our sales manager, will take you through some of the key ingredients we stock that fall under these buzzwords or these new categories. So what is the emerging profile of the Indian consumers today, especially you? As the spending power in India is increasing, there is greater awareness and adaptation to global trends. People today are more curious and quality conscious. They want to know the what, where, why, how of the product they're consuming and using. 
Secondly, they're digitally aware of the global trends. Social media is their best friend and people are more connected like never before. Thirdly, people are more environmentally conscious. People understand that climate change is real and environmental concerns don't just affect some parts of the global world, but definitely affect India too. Our summers are getting hotter, our winters are getting more cooler, and we have unpredictable rains. We know that our product choices impact the environment. Hence, the need to adapt to global trends is important to cater to the growing conscious consumer base in India. Let us now see how some of the global trends are already being adopted by some of the Indian products. In the home care sector, we have two examples. On the left hand side, we have a commonly available detergent that talks about having 100% biodegradable actives, 100% recyclable bottles, tough on stains, and kind to planet. On the right hand side, we have Think Safe Toilet Cleaner that's available on Amazon. It talks about it being eco friendly and biodegradable. It uses natural enzymes, natural actives, lemongrass oil, potato, and cornstarch. Let us now look at two product profiles of some Indian startups in the cosmetic sector. On the left hand side, we have a hydrating gel. Their claims are indicating some health and wellness benefits like boosting of hyaluronic acid production by up to 66%, reduction of appearance of wrinkles by up to 79.3%. Their tagline of their brand is nature approved. On the right hand side, we have a hand cream that's claiming to be a sanitizer as well as a moisturizer. Post COVID, hygiene really matters. Here, the two claims they have is it's dermatologically tested, 100% safe, and it shields against 99.9% .9 germs and dryness. As we can see here, the claims are backed by statistics and science. As there is a growing trend of emerging trend of claims, there is also an emerging trend of certifications in India. For example, we have a baby face cream out here that talks about it being made with organic. It is EcoCert certified. On the back side, the claims, there are various claims such as non-toxins, no parabens, no petroleum, no mineral oil, no synthetic fragrance, no phthalates, and no silicones. These claims essentially indicate safe ingredients for the skin. Also, it talks about using certified sustainable palm oil, important for biodiversity. Our last example is in terms of traceability and transparency. On the left-hand side is a snapshot of a website, Pure Sense. It talks about its gold-pressed macadamia nut oil being ethically sourced from Africa. While it's being transparent about its source, it's also saying ethically sourced. As we get more and more global, people want to ensure they're not a part of any kind of exploitation. At the end of the day, taking care of each other is a human need. On the right-hand side, we have a sunscreen from Greenberry Organics. I like what it says. What's inside is what really matters. They are being transparent about their ingredients, being transparent about the benefits it offers. And also something interesting to note out here is that earlier, maybe a sunscreen, everyone looked for probably just a UV protection. But now a sunscreen can offer much more treatment of damaged skin, healthy glow, radiance, restoration of skin elasticity, and much more. So we've gone through a lot of trends. These trends are more prominent globally, as I mentioned, but they're emerging domestic consumer trends. And they can be summarized actually into two halves, environment as well as people. In environment, we have it as biodegradable, we saw recyclable and renewable, organic, biodiversity, and good for planet. In terms of people, we see clean beauty and labels, naturals, transparency and traceability, health and well-being, and naturals. It's important to save our earth as well as the people matter. Sustainability is actually nothing but the coexistence of the environment and people needs, keeping the economy in mind. As our resources are being depleted and are becoming more scarce, and the population is increasing, sustainability has never been more relevant. 
Let us now see how the FNF industry is responding to the needs of the global trends that we just saw. In terms of environment protection, they're giving product innovation as well as soil protection and conservation. In product innovation, they're using and designing ingredients that are biodegradable, upcycled, designed using green chemistry principles, renewable, and the biotech space is evolving. For soil protection and conservation, there is development of sustainable farming methods, ensuring responsible extraction of the naturals, monitoring use of pesticides and fungicides, organic farming, rainwater harvesting, and certifications. Various sourcing platforms are now certified. In terms of FNF's industry's response to people protection, they're again doing it through two ways, by providing independent validations and being transparent. Trans independent validations in terms of certifications, claims, scientific studies, functional benefits. Certifications such as vegans, natural, organic, et cetera. Also something interesting to note is that many ingredients now don't just provide a good aroma and quality, but also much more. For instance, we are sole distributors of LMR Naturals by IFF in India. Their active essences and brain emotions collection are scientifically tested for cosmetic properties as well as aromacology benefits. Do connect with our sales team to learn more on these ingredients. Secondly, the FNF industry is being more transparent, transparent in terms of the ingredients being used, the ingredients are being traceable, use of safe ingredients, that is IFRA compliance, and ethical sourcing, protection of communities. I would like to make two points out here. In terms of independent validations, when it comes to certifications, claims, scientific studies, et cetera, we know it comes with an added cost. But a simple example we can take, probably when we have a party or an event at home, we will always call for food from which has offers standard quality. These certifications and claims provide exactly that for our formulations. In terms of being transparent, something interesting I read quoted by Simon Sinek is being transparent does not mean sharing every detail, but being able to provide the context upon which the decisions are being taken. So what are these new buzzwords and what do they actually mean? What is biodegradability? What is renewable? What's upcycling? What's green chemistry? What's organic? What's natural? And what is the relevance of these? For biodegradability, let's take a common example. Say we go on a trek and we're having a banana. We probably just throw the banana peel because we think it's going to biodegrade into the soil. But do we think twice about what's going down our drains? Probably not. All the home care, beauty care, personal care products, they all go down the drain. That's simply how it functions and hence unavoidable. What happens is these ingredients enter the sewage systems as well as the water treatment plants. These water treatment plants struggle to filter out these contents. Hence, they enter our rivers, seas and oceans, posing a great risk to our marine life. Also, possible introduction of toxic substances in our food chain. Hence, Let's be mindful of the ingredients we use. In terms of explaining biodegradability, there is no universal definition, especially in terms of how quickly the materials should break down. But we can broadly define biodegradability as the process by which substances are decomposed by microorganisms, mainly aerobic bacteria, into simpler substances such as carbon dioxide, water, and ammonia. For ingredient spotlight, we have orange flower, ether, and timbersit, which will be explained later by Neeraj. Renewability. Renewability is nothing but ingredients derived from renewable sources. And what are renewable sources? They can be replenished in a finite amount of time, such as plant-derived naturally occurring ingredients, residue, waste, matter, and bacteria. What's the relevance of renewability? As I mentioned, climate change is real. Also, the petroleum industry is set to shrink for two reasons. One, due to the pollution the fossil raw materials are providing. And secondly, the gradual transition towards electric vehicles. There is a need to preserve water and natural resources. Also, use of renewables ensures CO2 cycle is balanced and no extra CO2 is generated. Here too, in the ingredient spotlight, we have orange flower, ether, and timbersit, which will be explained later. A third term, upcycling. 
Upcycling is the process of transforming byproducts, waste materials, or discarded objects into new materials or products. An example we have for upcycled ingredients is the LMR's Upcycled Extracts Collection. It utilizes various types of waste, such as harvest byproducts, such as the seeds, spent extraction materials, such as pulp, side streams from processing facilities, such as wastewater. Here, green chemistry pr uh, principles have been leveraged too, which I will explain in the next slide. Ingredient spotlight, we have rose ultimate extract, rose essential and orange flower ether, which will be taken up by Neeraj. In terms of green chemistry, the last example that I'm gonna talk about is sustainable chemistry. Green chemistry is nothing but sustainable chemistry. It applies across the life cycle of a chemical product, including its design, manufacture, use, and ultimate disposal. It revolves around 12 key principles, some of which are waste prevention, designing safer chemicals, use of renewable feedstocks, design for degradation, and real-time pollution prevention. Here, the ingredient spotlight we have is Kashmira. A commonly available example of green chemistry in the FNF industry is the terpene-based chemistry crude sulfate turpentine route. CST, a widely available byproduct of the paper and pulp industry, upon fractionation and minimal waste reduction, gives alpha and beta pinene. Upon further fractionation, gives high-performing fragrance ingredients, such as ISOE Super from IFF, linalool and linalool acetate from Simrise, and many more in the FFPL ingredient basket. I'm now handing over to Neeraj, who will take you through some of the ingredients we stock. Thank you so much. Good morning, everyone. My name is Neeraj Shah. Today, I'm going to take you through some of the IFF ingredients, those fall under the, these categories, which Kia just talked about. The first ingredient is cashmeran. Cashmeran comes under green chemistry. It is made by the proprietary process of IFF, where hazardous wastes are eliminated. Hence, it is environmental friendly ingredient. It is revolutionary and uniquely multifaceted ingredient. It has excellent performance and stability for a wide range of end use applications. It is diffusive and long lasting. It enables perfumers to create a scents that are sophisticated, warm, sensual, and happy with different type of notes like floral, fruity, musky, umber, etc. The demand for cashmaran has increased in FNF industry in past several years. Next ingredient is rose. It comes under upcycled category. In IFF LMR, they have their rose sourcing platform in Turkey. Here, three processes have been combined. Those are petal distillation, water exhaustion, and residue extraction. As we can see in this process flow chart, rose petal on hydro distillation gives rose oil and rose water. Earlier, this rose water were discarded, but now this rose water mixed in natural proportions with rose oil and gives rose essential, which is an upcycled ingredient. Further, exhausted rose petals upon extraction gives another upcycled ingredient, which is rose ultimate extract. Here, one thing which is interesting to know that earlier, four tons of rose petals used to yield only one kg of rose oil. But today, four tons of rose petal yields two kgs of rose essential and three kgs of rose ultimate extract. Apart from rose essential and rose ultimate extract, we have different grades of rose in our, our portfolio, which are fragrance as well as flavor grades. Next ingredient is orange flower ether. As we can see, it covers many categories. It is readily biodegradable, it is bio-based, it is renewable, it is upcycled. Though it's a citrus molecule, still it's non-sensitizer and non-allergen. It is a cyclic, unsaturated, non-conjugated ether. Hence, it has a good stability. It is a part of IFF's hygiene essence collection. It can be used for acid cleaners, detergent powder, liquid laundry, laundry bar soap, air care, and for all purpose cleaners. It is a fragrance 
that makes the consumers feel refreshed, happy, and healthy. As we can see, IFF uses leftover orange peels. They pull out the liquid from these orange peels. Further, they process it using their expertise to create specific reactions and subsequent fractions, which first gives D limonin and further orange flower ether. Next ingredient is imbecile. It is readily biodegradable and renewable. It is an evolution of ISOE super. It has added power, which ensures equivalent result and effectiveness, but with less dosage. It gives unique performance at a cost that few other ingredients can match. It is smooth, warm, woody. It has umber note. It is powerful, yet silk soft. It brings subtle strength, bloom, and vibrance to a fragrance. It is readily biodegradable and long-lasting. As we all aware that long-lasting materials are usually stable molecules, hence slow to break down. But timber silk being readily biodegradable, it ensures perfumers to use these notes even as trends evolve. It is 75% renewable. It is bio-based and the feedstock used here is from sugarcane derivatives. Apart from these four ingredients, we have many other ingredients from IFF basket which falls under these categories. These are some of the ingredients which falls under biodegradable. These are some of the ingredients which falls under renewable. And these are the some of the ingredients which falls under upcycled. I'm sure Many of us are familiar with these ingredients. If you have any inquiries, please feel free to contact us on sales at finefreak.com. Thank you for attending this session. Wish you all a very happy Goody Padma. Thank you. Thank you to the Fine Fragrances team. Uh, Kea, are you here to answer some questions from the audience? Yes. Okay. Uh, Kea, good morning, first of all. Uh, we have a question from the audience. Approximately how many FNF ingredients from the total portfolio can be sourced sustainably? I think that's a very, uh, is it, am I on? Yeah, yeah, Kaya, you're audible. Yeah, so there are, uh, I think that's a question uh, that I would like to answer. Uh, I think uh, processes are constantly changing. So currently I would say we would have at least in our portfolio over 30 to 40 ingredients. Uh, those can be shared with you uh, if you're interested uh, via an email and we can tell you because we do stock over 150 IFF specialities and several of them go under many categories. So if you just talk of only sustainability, then uh, I can send out a list to you. Okay. Uh, the second question is uh, what increase in cost is expected for a raw material with the requisite certifications? Uh, see, these are very general questions because we are talking of 150 raw materials. Uh, and, you know, how can I answer a question when I don't know what you're comparing with? So if you tell me, uh, this is a conversation we can have uh, on a one-to-one. -one. If anybody has certain questions with respect to any particular ingredient, please feel free to write to us at sales at finefrag.com that this is my requirement. I'm looking at ingredients in a sustainable ingredient in this note and then we will come back to you and say these are the options that you have from our portfolio i mean i would not know how to save cost unless i know what you're using right okay uh, thank you for a very insightful session indeed conscious and sustainable choices are a need of the hour 
On behalf of Safai, thank you very much to the Fine Fragrances team for joining us today. Uh, thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you to Safai. And wish 